occasion it was said by thy beloved disciples teach us to pray for when we catch sight of the great God of heaven we do realize how insufficient we are so teach us to pray Lord in our hearts now for the things that that would be beneficiary to thy kingdom and for thy servants Thou knowest the need of every person here. Here on the desk this morning is handkerchiefs and aprons and just little parcels from the needy of physical aid and domestic and whatever it might be. But thou art God and God alone, the only true God that there is. And we ask thee in the name of Jesus, thy beloved Son, that you will heal each of these. And there may be some here who has not a handkerchief here or a parcel that need healing. There may be some out across the nations around the world that even this tape would meet in their homes or their churches. We would pray, Lord, that while the service is going on it, it, or the tape is being played or whatever position we might be in or our condition. May the great God of heaven 
honor this sincerity of our hearts this morning and heal the needy, give to them what they have need of. Bless us now in the coming on service. Speak through us like never before for the kingdom of God's sake. We wait in Jesus' name for thy answer. Amen. It's good to be here in church again this morning. And I was just talking to some friends who've just come in from Ohio to a little girl that was brought down here a few months ago that was dying with leukemia. The people were very poor, the parents. And I haven't time this morning to read the, uh, the testimony which is going on file. But there's the little girl's picture after three days, I believe it was after she was prayed for. The doctors give her just three days to live, and in three days later they could find not even a trace of it. And so she's in school, very happy. I'm sure the church remembers when we had her here in the room. And also the little baby that was born with the bowels, uh, uh, like on the outside. Somehow the doctors in this little condition, the way the bowels were formed, could not be placed back again. They was afraid to touch the little thing, it, just a newborn baby. And now the little fellow is about a year old, I guess, something like that, with normal bowels, everything just as normal as it can be. It's just the grace of God and how good he is to us. Now, uh, today uh, I was want to announce that the meeting that we were planning, I was planning on going to this next coming week in, in Africa over with Brother Joseph Bose in Kenya, and Tanganyika, we are unable to have the meeting with a telegram back from Brother Bose. Last week, three of our own missionaries was killed and um, murdered. And they're having an uprise there now, and the communists are slipping guns into the natives, claiming they got fish boats sitting around, Red China and Russia, and uh, getting guns to the natives, and they don't know no better than to use them, just on anything that they see to use it on. So they're... Uh, the the uh, the government thought that it wouldn't be wise to have the meeting at this time. And as I understand also that Brother Bose cannot even have his school open in this area where I was going uh, at this time. But it's not canceled. It's just postponed until they can get it quietened again. Very happy this morning to see in the midst of us again uh, for many years absence Brother uh, Jackson, Brother Sidney Jackson and Sister Jackson from South Africa had these folks. Yeah. And uh, these people was my real uh, brothers and sister and co-workers in the campaign in South Africa the last trip over, which uh, we trust that someday by God's grace to get back with them again for it's a uh, needy and I've been trying for nine years to get back but on account of the organizations and so forth they won't let me back so uh, I wrote them a letter recently and said then let the blood of those lost souls be on you and not on me for I believe that God has been wanting to use my ministry over there for those people for uh, some time and uh, by their denominational difference uh, they won't let me come back. But all right, the Lord will take care of that. Now, what I uh, wish to say this morning, that if the Lord willing, Brother Neville has asked me to have services tonight and um, at the tabernacle, so we, you're invited out. And then next Sunday, the Lord willing, I'm to be here also. Then maybe for the next two or three Sundays, because of the absence of this a being cancellation of this meeting that was in making. Now, we also would like to say that I said maybe we would preach the seven trumpets during this time. We uh, wondered just how that we were going to do it in the insufficiency of the size of the building and the inconvenience of the air conditioner, uh, no air in the room, uh, it's not fixed yet for air conditioning. And we tried to rent this school up here, which is air conditioned, which seat about 
Oh, I don't know. It's a nice city. You can pass a very fine school. But we could find nothing. And it would, uh, they'd give us next week. But next week, see, there's delegations coming from different parts of the world, from Jamaica and from the islands and from south, even to South America and Canada and Mexico and across the nations. And we sent out the notices Monday. Then they wouldn't get them until about Wednesday or Thursday and then have to ask time off and so forth, which would throw it way out. The next week's on until uh, school time. It's, you'd have to take it one night and then off, maybe a night or two, and then on again. And we just couldn't do that. You couldn't make it. I wondered why. When I'd prayed sincerely. And then it's uh, about time for us to return back to Arizona again for the children to get in school. And then we, uh, I was talking to the wife. And yesterday I went into the room. And I said, Lord, I, I may not use so many words, but... Uh, understand, please, God, what I mean in my heart. What is the matter that everything is cut off from preaching those trumpets? And then he came and revealed it. And now this morning I want to speak to you on the reason why. And now uh, let us, who has Bibles and would like to, to turn in our Bibles, we will turn first to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. If the Lord is willing, tonight I'm going to preach on the subject, going beyond the camp. And it will be short, and so you can have time to get back to your places for work. We're happy to see visitors in, people from uh, out of town. How many out of town people here while we're looking? 95%, yeah, 98% of the congregation. So you see, it isn't Jeffersonville, it's the people who come into Jeffersonville. We are here by the grace of the Lord. And now, uh, I want to read three places this morning. One of them is found in Leviticus, the 23rd uh, chapter, and the other is in Isaiah 18 and Isaiah 27. You who are marking it down. And now... Instead of preaching, the Lord willing, I'll do that tonight, but I want to teach this morning on the Feast of the Seven Trumpets, which this month is the Feast of the Seven Trumpets, beginning, and which is the seventh month, which would be July the 15th, was beginning of the Feast of the Trumpets and the Levitical Laws. Now... And if you have your papers and things and wish to write down scriptures and texts and so forth as we go along. There's one thing uh, to this uh, meeting. It's hot, and we are accustomed to that for, through the years. But someone might think that I believe that when we enter into this building that we cease time, maybe in partly, partially in eternity, the way how long I hold the people. I don't mean it to be that way, but... I believe that we're living at so close to the coming of Jesus that I have to take advantage of every minute that I have the people together. And I was thinking, as I was driving down the road a while ago, being out for a little prayer just for entering the pulpit as any real sincere clergyman does, I was thinking, um, you know, we're having the most glorious time when we meet here together. Amen. But, and the people gathering from many states sitting right in here now, from way away, hundreds and hundreds of miles. And we assemble together to fellowship around the Word, but there will come a time soon when this will be just a fond memory. That is right. These times will be taken away from us. So, therefore, we must do all that we know how to do to make this every minute count. And think of this now while we're suffering in the heat of the morning. And you know every human body is a, a dynamo of heat itself. And it makes it pretty hard on you. And, uh, but I want you to get the word. Amen. Now, just before we, uh, we read, let's pray. Lord, most any person in here that can move their hands could turn the pages of this Bible. But there's but one among us this morning that can open it. That's the great Holy Ghost which is in our midst. 
open to us the word, Lord, as we read. As you did to the disciples as they went on the road to Emmaus and began to explain to them the scriptures. And may we, when we leave, say like those who coming back to Jerusalem from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us as he spake to us along the way? For it's in the name of Jesus we ask it. Amen. Let us stand in reverence to the word. Now, my subject this morning is the Feast of the Trumpets. I want to read now from the 23rd verse of the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, and in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy a convocation. Now in the book of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse of the 18th chapter, this connects this together. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the river of Ethiopia, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even the vessels of bulrush upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered, healed of the people, terrible nation melted out and trotted down, whose land the river has spoiled. And all ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lift up an ensign on the mountain, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. In Isaiah 27, 12, and 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the streams of Egypt. And ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and ye shall come which are ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcast in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Let us pray again. Lord, bless these words to our hearts. May our thoughts and our meditation be according to thy bidding. In Jesus' name, amen. You be seated. There's so many things that a pastor would like to say to his congregation that he loves, of different people from different places, which would not be permitted on the count of time. Now, as we approach this subject, we want you to feel at liberty, and many of you are standing, and as I come by, the halls is full, and outside the doors, the front, around the building, around the wall. So now, if you want to change seats with each other, that'll be fine. Now, the Feast of the Trumpets. Now, this was a gathering of Israel where they gathered together the Feast of the Trumpets. Now, I have been anticipating for some time to, to speak on the subject of the seven trumpets in the book of Revelations. And now we're going to review this just a moment to bring out the real cause of me not speaking this time because... The Holy Spirit would not let me speak at this time on these things. I know that sounds very uh, juvenile, maybe, to people of great learning and understanding, but to the Christian, it's different. We, we follow the leading of the Spirit, that alone. Now, I begin to notice at the preaching of the seven church ages, which is 
the, the pattern or the forecast of all that God was going to do for the churches and through the churches and positionally setting them up. The first uh, three chapters of the book of Revelations reveals all the happenings unto the church. Then from the third chapter unto the 19th chapter of Revelation, there is no more seeing of the church. The church goes up at the fourth chapter of Revelations and returns back at the 19th chapter of Revelations, the bride and the groom together coming to the earth. And then from the 19th chapter uh, to the conclusive of the 22nd chapter, it's all on the millennium and what will be in the years that is to follow. During the 4th to the 19th, God is dealing with Israel. Now, then when we got finished with the book of the uh, revelation of the church, what God did to those seven churches which were then in their infancy or their shadow in Asia Minor. Then the Holy Spirit revealed and opened to us all the mysteries in there, the, how he's brought his church through history. And if you don't have the seven church ages on tape, it would be good if you listen to them, and soon they'll be in book form. Then just leaving it at that and presuming that after a while we'd preach on the seals, not knowing what the seals was. I had my own idea, as every minister does, of reading maybe what other man had said and believing as much as I possible with them on the things that they had drawn up their conclusion. Uh, I'd read the book of Mr. Smith, uh, Uri Smith, which is the Adventist uh, teacher, and um, I'd read his, uh, his thoughts on it, and I'd read uh, Mr. Larkin, I'd read all, so many different ones of their commentaries on this, but uh, somehow or other, I thought I had uh, a little view of it myself that might be, uh, the place is different, but trying one time, just speaking three subjects, the first, uh, the four subjects of the four horse riders. I preached only four nights, one on one horse and the other. But then just before it happened, I was given a vision, which is on tape, as you all know, sirs, what time is it? That I should go to Tucson, Arizona. And there on the backside of the desert, up into the mountain where I was with some brethren and told about what a great blast would go off. And uh, seven angels came down. Me thinking myself, it was the end of my life. Told my wife to get with Billy and what to do with the children and so forth till we met again at the other side. Then one day in the Sabinia Canyon, while God called me early in the morning up there, I was up with my hands in the air praying and a sword came into my hands. You know that? I stood there and looked at it as natural as my hand is now, not knowing what it meant. And it was left me with a voice that said, This is the sword of the king. And then later when the angel of the Lord revealed it, it was the word in the hand. Immediately after that, the angels of the Lord appeared and told about the seven uh, trumpets or the seven seals. And I was to return back here to Jeffersonville and preach the seven seals. And there, if I've ever said anything that was inspired, it was in that. There where the angel of the Lord met us in the Bible become a new Bible. There it opened up and revealed all the things that the reformers and things had left out. It was a complete revelation of Jesus Christ, altogether new to us, but perfectly, exactly with the Scripture. Amen. That was the Word, which has always been. I was so inspired and directed. Then when I come to this part here of preaching the seven trumpets, I was thought, well, I'll not try to think anything. I'll just wait till that time and let him reveal it to me. And then yesterday when I was, uh, went into the room and wondering why, or beg your pardon, it was the day before yesterday, when I went into the room to try to understand, it was there that the Holy Spirit opened up this to show me the reason it's not profitable even for the church at this time, because it has nothing to do with the church at all. Now, the hidden mysteries of Christ was fully revealed in the seven seals. It revealed first the seven church ages, opened up the ages, and placed them positionally both with history and with the Bible. 
and set them in position how they was, and we found ourselves in the last church age being the Laodicea church age, which was the most corruptible of all the church ages. Even from the very first, from Ephesians, was a great church age. And then how here the Holy Spirit giving me a vision and seeing what would take place. I draw it on the blackboard two years ago. Here it is up here on the drawing. That how that the light was fading off of the earth, which would be exactly the way that the light come on the earth as a gospel and how it would fade in and out. Not knowing it at the time what it meant and how it would be. But the great ecumenical world had a, a meeting with Rome and Rome, which is a mother of all organizations. The Pope, for the first time in history, left the Vatican and went to Jerusalem and many places. Now, Jerusalem is the ancient seat of all of our religion, is Jerusalem. And in this ancient seat, the Pope from Rome, which has been the church's greatest enemy all times, leaves to come over to visit Rome, or from Rome to Palestine, Jerusalem. And as we see, uh, being uneducated, myself, not knowing the, the words and how to speak them, I've always taught in types and patterns of nature. Nature will follow nature. Nature is of God. When you take a time when cattle on in the field all congregate together in the corner of the field, take your fish line out of the water. Fish won't bite. You'll never catch them. See, the cattle are resting, unless you happen to drop right down in a bed of one. But when cattle go to feeding, watch the same time the cattle does that, the birds also will take to the trees. They'll quit uh, a feeding. See, it's nature. All of it blends together. You notice the bees at that time is buzzing over their honey, not gathering it. All nature works together. And therefore, like we see a tree drop a leaf off, pretty soon now in the next couple of months, the leaf will leave the tree, and the, the life, the sap, will go down into the root. And the tree leaf will drop off and fall on the ground and will rot. And the calcium and and the potash, and it's in the tree leaf, will rot in the ground. And what happened? The life went on ahead of it and will suck it right back into itself and bring that leaf back again. It's a death, burial, and resurrection. And all nature and the moon is the, is the wife of the sun. It is the lesser light. And then... Also, that when the sun is gone, in the absence of the sun, the moon reflects the light to the earth, which is a type of the church. And when the Pope leaves the ancient enemy of the church and comes over to the Jerusalem, which is the seat of the church, which is the new Jerusalem and the old Jerusalem, we notice before it did it, there was a total blackout of the moon. And in the papers across the nation, as we have on the board, it displayed how that that moon turned from light to darkness. And the very phenomena of it, that that moon drawed exactly in the skies the same thing the Holy Spirit had me to draw here two years ago and showing the covering, the when. It went six pictures. I put the seventh on there because the seventh church aid, just a shadow of light, the going of the, that's where Jesus at the door knocking. But it goes into total darkness. And what a reflection, what a message from God himself that these things are the truth. Amen. Testified it first in his word, then by the Spirit at the platform, and then declared it in the heavens. Amen. There's no mistake about it at all. Those seals and ages are perfectly in line. Perfectly. 
God given witness by supernatural signs and wonders with the word and history all placed together in the age that we're now living in. Now it's hard for the churches to see this. It's hard for the denominations to see it. They always try to think that you're trying to bawl the people out. You're not. You're trying to warn the people. It isn't trying to be evil to them. You're trying to get them from the evil. It isn't people in the organizations. It's the system that they're in that's damning them. Honest, sincere people are Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, and what more. It's human beings who... who Nuns don't go into the nunnery to be bad women. They go in there to be good women. They're trying to get closer to God, but it's a system that pollutes them. People join church not to be a bad person, but to be a good person. But it's a system of the church that draws them from the Word and the principles that God's laid down for this day, and that's what gets them out. I remember God is the Word. And each age He has lotted the word for each age that would be on the earth. He loved it in the church age and the seven seals revealed every bit of it. See? Why did there was there mysteries that were still hid? In Revelations 10 we find at the end of the seventh angel's message that these mysteries that had been hid would be revealed. Revelations 10, 1 to 7. Notice, the reason is because there had been no prophets during this age. The Bible said that God does nothing till He reveals it to His prophets, His servants, the prophets. And the Word of the Lord in all ages has always come to the prophets. Never to a system, never to a group. Never did God use a group. Every time any group of people organized, God left it and never did return. Search the history and see if that's right or not. We've already done it. Never does he deal with a system or a group after they organize. It's against God. Therefore, during the time of the Reformations, there come in reformers as the seven seals proved that it was. But in the last days now, it was supposed to be revealed again because we find in the Scripture of Malachi 4, that there is to be an anointing come down and to restore again that original faith and to bring the faith of the people back to the original Pentecost, the faith of the fathers. And we took the Elijah of the first run. We took the Elisha to follow him. We took John the Baptist after that, who was the Elisha that day, and a promise for another in this day. Now, John the Baptist was not the Elisha of Malachi 4. He was the Elisha of Malachi 3. Jesus said so. Behold, I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way. We find him being that. Now, in doing so, in finding uh, those positions, we know that all the rest of Scripture, inspired of God, reveals to us that we're in the last day. Now, if I come with the message of Pentecost, I'd be in the Lady of Sin Church Age and it wouldn't be right. That's the reason that Wesley could not take Luther's message. Luther was in one age, Church Age, and Wesley was in another Church Age. If Jesus would have come in the, with the message of Moses, it would not have worked. If Moses would have come with the message of Noah, it would not have worked. But God has lauded to His is uh, people of every age of Scripture. And before the age can come into existence, into time, then the churches has got it so mixed up that they, they don't know where they're at. That's the reason they fail to recognize Jesus being the Son of God. Their, their traditions had blinded their eyes, but He was exactly with the Scripture. Amen. The prophets was the same. Jesus said, which of you of your fathers didn't stone those prophets that were sent to you. Then God sends His prophet to... And the prophet is the living Word of God made manifest. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, How can you condemn me to say I'm the Son of God? And you call in your own laws. You said those who the Word of the Lord came to, which were the prophets, you call them gods, and they are, for the Scriptures cannot be broken, He said. 
then how will you condemn me? When he is, they were a part of the law. They were a part of the Word of God. But Jesus was the fullness of the Word of God. His whole plan of redemption. Amen. God's whole sufficiency was in him. Amen. And now, through the church ages, they've done the same. And the seven seals is to reveal all the mysteries that was left off during that time because we're without prophets. And the word does not come to reformers. Prophets. God is unchangeable. And Malachi 3 said, I am God and I change not. God's first way of doing anything, that's God's every way of doing anything. God decided he would save man by the shed blood of an innocent one in the Garden of Eden. And he has never changed it since and cannot change it. We've tried by education, by buildings, by systems by denominations, by ethics, and everything else, and it's all failed. Amen. But there's only one place that God meets man that's under the shed blood of the innocent. Only by the blood. That was his first decision. See, we can make a decision, and next year we can think better. We got a better idea of it next year. God can't. He's infinite. His first decision is perfect. Nothing can move it. I can learn more. We're finite. I can learn more. You can learn more. But God can't learn more. He's perfect to begin with. And therefore, His first decision, rest your soul upon it. What the Bible says, that's it. God's got to judge the world someday. And the Catholic says He'll judge it by the Catholic Church. If that be so, which Catholic Church? They differ one from another. If you go to judge it by the Protestant, which Protestant Church? They differ one from another. And it would be a bit confusing no one would know where to stand. If the Methodist is right, the Baptist is lost. If the Protestant is right, the Catholic's lost. The Catholic's right, the Protestant's lost. But the Bible said that he will judge the world by Jesus Christ. Amen. And he is the Word. Amen. Then he'll judge it by the Word. Amen. And all denominations get off of that Word to make their creed. I... Just ask any to prove to me where they take the full word. They can't do it because it's controlled by a system of man. Where you got man, God never did deal but with one person at a time. He never even had two prophets at the same time. One. God can get one man in his hand. He doesn't deal with you, your organization. He deals with you. Now, upon that basis, we come to the Feast of the Trumpets. The hidden mysteries. is prophesied it was to be that way. Therefore, it had to be revealed in the way that it was. But to be revealed in this last day to fulfill exactly what I've just said, Malachi, the fourth chapter, Luke, the 17th chapter, and the, the 30th verse, how he would do it, and uh, Hebrews 13, 8, Hebrews 4, 12, and many of those scriptures that tell us. Now, if that's foreign to some of you, May I say that God always, the way God is known amongst people is by being prophetic. The Jews always know to believe their prophets. He said, if there be one among you, I, the Lord, will speak to him uh, in spiritual dreams and in visions. And what he says come to pass and hear him. They were always, that's how they failed to recognize Jesus and had to class him something else. So they made him an evil spirit, Beelzebub because he is able to discern the thoughts that was in their hearts. We always know it. that's a sign of the Word. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse, said the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When He, the Holy Ghost, will come upon you, He will remind you of these things I've said and will show you things to come. God in sundry times and divers matters, Hebrews 1, spoke to the fathers, to the prophets in this last days through His Son, Jesus Christ. The same God just changed from the prophets to the Son. That's all. See? Always the same message, the same way of doing it. Now, it's prophesied that the churches would be in this condition had to be restored back again. And he said in Malachi 4 that he would send Elijah the prophet and would restore the, the people back again. Where they bring it. Notice. And just before, right after his message, there will be a time when the world will burn and the righteous will walk out upon the ashes. Now, to some theologian, that might be 
listening in on the tape somewhere around the world, if you uh, think that that was John, remember, then the Scriptures is wrong. For the world did not burn after John's message. Jesus did not come and take the people in the millennium. But He's promised to do it after the spirit of Elijah comes up on the earth again. Notice. Now, in Malachi 4, we see here that this is supposed to be done to restore what? The faith of the people back to the original fathers, the Pentecostal doctrine, the original fathers. And He will restore the people back to the fathers. We find in Luke 17, Jesus said that when He come, in this last days, Luke 17, 33, we find out that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man when the Son of Man is being revealed. Now notice He come in three sons' names. He come in the name of the Son of David, or the Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David. Now He had to come as Son of Man because He was a prophet. Jehovah Himself called the prophet Son of Man. And Jesus never referred to Himself as Son of God. He referred to Himself always as Son of Man. And notice, He revealed Himself then as the prophet, the seer. He said, If I do not the works of my Father, then believe it not. He met every description that was spoke of Him in the Scripture, even to His death, burial, resurrection, His crucifixion, His birth, it all. And in His Word, He met the description of the seer, the Son of Man. Now He's been revealed through the church ages, now watch, through the church ages as Son of God. God being a Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He revealed Himself in the church ages as in the congregation as the Holy Spirit among the people. We find in Laodicea church age, the last church age, He's put out of the church. Nowhere else was He ever put out in any age. But in the Lady of Siachi, because they said we're rich and have need of nothing, know it not that you're miserable, poor, naked, and blind, and don't know it. He was put out of the church age, and then according to Luke 17, he said, As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now he was reading the same Genesis that we read. Notice in Sodom, what taken place? What was it in Sodom? Abraham, there's always three classes of people. There was Abraham, the elected and called out outside of Sodom itself. There was Lot, the church member, our denominational man. Down, he became part of that world by being the mayor of the city. Set in the gate, he was a judge, which is a mayor. And there was Sodom itself. Now, at the evening time or the middle of the day, when Abraham was under his oak, three angels appeared to him. Two of them went down in Sodom and preached the gospel and tried to call him out. They wouldn't do it. They were perverted. Lot and his wife only, and two of his daughters started out, and the wife turned to a pillar of salt. But the one that stayed and talked to Abraham, and Abraham called Elohim, the Almighty, Genesis 1, God in the beginning, God, Elohim, the, the all-sufficient one, the self-existing one. Abraham called him Elohim, and he sat down and eat with Abraham. He drank. He was in human flesh. And watch the sign that he gave Abraham. Now, they were looking for a coming son, a promised son, Isaac. Twenty-five years on a long journey, they had looked for it. But they were at the end of the journey... Amen. God had appeared in many forms as He has through the church ages and lights and so forth as He spoke to Abraham and the voices. But just before the coming sun arrived, now we've been through it and you know I'm just rehearsing you this to you, that He changed the body of Abraham and Sarah immediately after this so they could receive the sun. Notice the last sign that they got before the sun arrived was Jehovah talking to them in the form of a man. And how they know this was Jehovah because he said, Abraham, not Abram. 
just a few days before God had changed his name. Where is thy wife? Sarah, not S-A-R-R-A, but S-A-R-A-H, princess. And Abraham said, she is in the tent behind you. And he said, I, that's a personal pronoun, I will visit you according to my promise at the time of life, the next 28 days, something's going to happen to Sarah. And Sarah, in the tent, smiled in herself and said in her heart, how could this be seeing I'm old and have pleasure with my Lord who is also old, Abraham? And the angel, or the man, said, why did Sarah say that in her heart? In the tent behind him. Why did she say these things cannot be? See, a man in human flesh, like a prophet, yet it was Elohim, discerning the thought that was in Sarah's heart behind him. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be at the coming of the end of the world when the Son of Man, not Son of God, when the Son of Man will be revealed. Hadn't had it through the age. See that perfect continuity of the Scripture? Amen. Here we live in it. The mysteries even of the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus and awaken the oneness idea and these other things, how the Holy Spirit has moved that in and showed it perfectly and the true baptism of the Holy Spirit, the token and everything it placed in high place to every reform and everything just exactly and see right before our own eyes. And it's not in a corner, it's world knowing Jesus, the Son of God, revealing Himself by the Scriptures, making that Scripture that has been predestinated to this day like it was to that day and all other days, live. And to believe it is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, you can't pronounce that uh, just uh, uh, going to church is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. If you do, then them Pharisees had it. See? You can't pronounce uh, shaking or jumping. Being the, or if you do, the heathens has got it. If you say speaking in tongues, what, what devil worship doesn't speak in tongues? Tell me one. Brother Jackson sitting here for Africa, from Africa. He could tell you that. I've been in the Indian camps here. See the witches and wizards cut themselves and pour their own blood and speak in tongues and, and the witch doctor interpret it. And see him lay down a pencil and write in an unknown tongue. So that's not it. But if it, what is the true evidence? Jesus said that you believe that I'm He. And He is the Word. Why didn't they get it? Why didn't the Jews get it? They were righteous men. They were good men. They were holy men. And there were all kinds of people. But to whom is predestined to hear the Word... And how do you know whether it is the Word? Each one says this. It's the promise of the Bible being vindicated of that age. Amen. There you are. Then you come back to where the Holy Spirit is. What's the sound of the trumpet in a few minutes? What it declares. The trumpet, the gospel trumpet. <laughs> See who can hear it. Remember those in the walled cities could not come out in the Jubilee. No, sir, they were in the walls. They stayed there. It was over their slaves the rest of their life and had to be marked. Now, as we see all these patterns, notice, now these acts, Malachi 4, and all this, and Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever, He remains forever the Word. The Word made manifest. That's exactly what He declared the prophets. A prophet doesn't only mean a seer, a foreteller. It means a revealer of the Word that's written in His own life. His own works reveals and vindicates the word of that day like Noah building the ark, Moses down there, whatever more than any promise. Amen. Amen. The promised word for that hour. Now we know that he's with us. We believe that. He sees his word made manifest by photographs, by scriptures, by declarations in the heaven on earth. Everything else that he said, not one time has it failed. Amen. I ask any person to show me from the different parts of the country or over the world. You're, you're obligated to write me and tell me. 
where one time it ever failed. Perfect word by word. Now, that's a promise. Why was he to appear in this last days? If you go back and you take listeners to the bride tree and bring up where Christ was, that tree that was in the Garden of Eden, the first Adam that fell, and this second Adam was cut down by sin. They hung him on a Roman tree, and out of that drew the, come out the bride tree that he promised that we see in the Scriptures. Now, in order to get the bride, like the pyramid, that comes in minority all the time, from the great wide, from Luther, Wesley, Pentecost, and then the capstone in the top of it is so honed. And each one of those stones are so perfectly put together, and we don't know yet how they did it. But it's so perfectly put together in that pyramid. And we're not pyramid teaching now. We're just Enoch and them built it years ago. And it stands for a symbol just the same as the sun rises and sets. Just the same as the tree drops its light. It's leaf, it comes back again. As the fish and the cattle and everything else symbolizes it. That pyramid stands as a symbol. Go into the prophet's chamber and watch them seven steps. Where did the, where did the uh, guard meet the uh, challenge to bring the comer into the presence of the king at the top of the steps is in the seventh step. That shows that we've got to come again with that same spirit that was on John. He introduced the Messiah. He was greater than all the prophets. He introduced it, and we've got to come to a place again to something that's going to introduce the Messiah. And how will the Messiah, the people that's believing in the Lord, unless they're constantly in the Word to know what He is. Daniel said, The wise shall know, but the foolish and unwise wouldn't know. They shall know their God. Now, now, how it shall appear in the last days is to bring the people back to the Word so that the bride will know her husband, know her mate, the revealed Word. That's why this has to happen. It wasn't in the Reformers. It wasn't Luther, Wesley, and, and the Pentecostals. Then. Scripture says it wasn't. But it will come. That is His promise for this age. We're living in the age. That his coming will be in. She must be identified in him. Any woman must be identified with her husband. For the two are one. And Christ's bride has to be identified with him. For the two are one. And he is the word. Not the denomination, the word. We are to be the children of the light. And the light is the word which is made light. For this age. How do we know light? Except it comes from the Word. All right, the Word made flesh is the light of the age. When you see it, the Bible said so. Then people looking at Jesus there and said, Well, this man, who is he? Well, he's born to illegitimate birth down there. Why, his father and mother is this, that, and the other, and all this there. But they didn't know him. If they know the Scriptures, they would have known him. He said so. They said, we're Moses' disciples. They said, if you knew Moses, you'd know me. For Moses wrote of me. And still too blind to see it. See how humble? Away from all the crews and the denominations and the creeds and everything, God moved right in in flesh in the form of a man, a kinsman redeemer. She must be identified with him. We are invited to be the children of the light, that we walk in the light. I remember down in Kentucky here not long ago, I <coughs> had a meeting. <coughs> Out after I come out of the church, uh, there was an old man standing with a lantern in his hand. He belonged to a church that don't believe in healing and so forth. I said, I, I differ with you, Brother Branham. I said, well, you've got a right to do that. He said, you see, I will not accept anything unless I see it. I've got to see it right plain. I said, then, did you ever see God? Right plain stand before him? Of course, he didn't believe in visions. And he said, no. I said, then, you're not a believer, sir. I couldn't talk to you. <laughs> We see what God promises and hold to that. He said, how do you figure that? I said, he said, come go home with me and talk tonight. I said, I can't like to. Where you live? He said, you go over this mountain here. I said, how you go to get there? You don't see your house. <laughs> he said, well, there's a path runs up over the hill. I said, you don't see the path. He said, well, I got a lantern. I said, the lantern won't show the light right on the house. 
Oh, no. But that path will lead to the house. But that lantern will only show light for one step at a time. We'll walk in the light, the beautiful light, one step at a time, or coming closer to him. Yeah, children of the light, accept his word. Keep walking and watch more unfold. Don't leave it. No matter what anybody else says, stay right in that. Just keep walking with it. Watch it unfold and reveal itself. The word is a seed. A seed in the right kind of ground will bring forth its kind. Notice Revelations 10, 1 to 7. All the mysteries are to be revealed to the bride by the messenger of the Lady of Sea Church. Has anybody got a revised version Bible? If you have, you notice there where it said the angel, it's in parentheses, it says the eagle. Yeah. Uh, 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 a messenger to the, the Lady of Sea Church. Yeah. Revelations 10, 1 to 7. And he said that this, in that day, that he seen him come down and he eat up the little book. And there was, he stood up one foot on land and one on the sea and swore by him that is and ever and ever that time shall be no more. And when he did, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, John said he was about to write. He said, don't write it. See? And he sealed it. Now someone said, well, that's seven seals then, Brother Branham, that will be revealed in the last days. Some great mystery how we get closer to God. No, sir, it can't be. Whosoever shall take one word from this Bible or add one word to it, his part will be taken in the book of life. What it is is a revelation on what has been missed back there to bring to it's already wrote here, it's in here. It's to reveal what already has been written. Amen. See, because you can't add one thing to it or take one word from it. The first chapter of, re, of, of the Bible in the beginning, Genesis, one woman. Didn't misbelieve it, but she just misinterpreted, let Satan misinterpret to her one word. Surely. <laughs> See? And then from that caused all this trouble. And that was God speaking, God's word. And in the last chapter of Revelation, Jesus himself, the same God, said, Whosoever shall take one word out or add one word to it. This is a complete revelation of Jesus Christ. And the seven seals had the mysteries hid of what it all was and supposed to open it in the last day at the Lady of Sin age at the end of time. Thanks be to God. That finishes the message to the church. That finishes it when they look back and see what has been and see where it's all brought up to. That finishes it, the age of the church. Now I notice the trumpets that we're speaking of is a call together for either a feast for war, for a person, some sacred day, or something like that. Notice, you said for a person, yeah, or for the year of Jubilee, the announcing of the coming of freedom, when they can go back. Now we can take a complete morning on just that one thing. But now getting into the trumpet, you got the background now of the seals and the church. Now we're going into the trumpet. The trumpet sounded, and the trumpet denotes either war or feast day, or if what it means is a gathering together of the people. The trumpet. Paul said, when the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who can prepare themselves for war, or for peace, or whatever it is? Who knows? You have to know what the trumpet sounds. Therefore, when the trumpet sounds, we see something in the earth today, there's a great trouble somewhere. Everybody knows it. Everybody's become an erotic. The whole world is an erotical world. And we know there's something wrong. The Pentagon, everywhere, we know there's something wrong. Now, the only way you'll know what the trumpet sound is is to look what the music sheet says. <laughs> so, it's a great symphony. See? And beating like Peter and a wolf. See, when you, if the, and the, the composer has wrote the book and the director must be in the same spirit of the composer if he don't, he gives the wrong beat and then the whole thing's out. That's what's the matter today. We got too many directors in the, not in the spirit of the composer. They say the denomination, well, we believe this no matter what you say. The Bible is right. Beat it out according to the sheet music right here before. Then the great symphony of God's great act is playing out just right. Then we see the hour and where we're standing. Now, notice the trumpet is to call together the people, send themselves together for something. Sometimes it announced an important person like in Joseph. They sounded the trumpet and Joseph uh, was appearing which is a, a symbol of the great trumpet that we speak of and get to after a while in Isaiah. 
that says when the great trumpet sounds, when that end sign will be lifted up out there, then there'll come a time when the great trumpet will be sounded and all the nations will gather to Jerusalem. That's when the millennium starts, the great trumpet. The, this calling of the feast of the trumpets, the approaching of something. Notice Revelations 8 and 7, if you want to write it down. We notice the first trumpet, there's scattered hail, blood, fire upon the earth. Just exactly with Exodus, when God was calling his people out of the Exodus. Now, the reason that these seven trumpets does not apply to this church in this age is because it's to Israel only. It's the calling of the gathering of the people. And now there's only one significance in here that I want you to get to in a few minutes. It's where you'll see why this doesn't apply to this age that we're living in, the seven trumpets. I know many people differ with that, but I know it's this. I, I don't, don't know because I'm saying you're saying it because I didn't get it from myself. My, my thought is not my own. Every one it is, it told me if it's wrong, then it's wrong. But I'm not telling it by my own. I'm telling it by what somebody else has said. That somebody else is a God that spoke to us and done all these things that he has done and appeared. See, so I know it's right. The, the gathering of Israel is the trumpets. The trumpets is together Israel. Notice, the very first trumpet sound, blood, fire, hail, and everything scattered the ground. See, what was he doing? Bringing Israel out of spiritual Egypt. See, back into his homeland. Now let me say this right here. That every trumpet that blowed, blowed under the sixth seal. And we'll get to it in a few minutes where we had caught the seal there. All the trumpets sounded under the sixth seal because the seventh seal, there was silence. No one knew that was the minute or hour that Christ would come as he revealed it to us. But every trumpet sounded under the sixth seal under the persecution of the Jews. <laughs> Notice, Revelations now, eighth, and begin with the seventh verse. All was the calling out of Israel, natural in Egypt. Now it's a calling out of Israel in the spiritual sense. He was making them ready to come to the Feast of the Atonement. Notice, the Feast of the Trumpets was first, which was Pentecost. The Feast of the Atonement followed it 50 days later. The Feast of the Atonement, read it here. We'll probably, if we have time, we'll refer to it and read to you out of the Bible here in Leviticus 12. Now, or Leviticus 23, rather, in Leviticus 16. We find that the first was the Feast of the of the trumpets was the atonement. And uh, uh, after it followed, Pentecost. Now, we find out a uh, feast of the atonement followed the feast of the trumpets. Now, notice, the trumpet sounded, and that was to gather them together. Now, the first trumpet blowed, there was hail, blood, fire, sprayed upon the earth, just exactly like it was in Egypt making ready to call them to the day of the atonement. See, they rejected the true atonement. And this year has been lengthened out through here has been the year of Pentecost. See? Now, the sounding for the Jews comes next. This has been the calling out of the church. Watch real close. Now, which afterwards he took them to the land of promise, which he will do the same thing, and which in symbol he takes the church to the land of promise. Remember, every trumpet sounded under the sixth seal, only then when it sounded. Notice, now, exactly, the continuity of the Scripture is exactly the same. Under the seventh trumpet is to Israel the same as the seventh seal was to the church. We find under the seventh seal that when these souls that was under the altar there that received robes, they were given robes. Not that they earned them because they were in the dispensation when God was still dealing with grace with the Gentiles, not Jews. Israel is saved as a nation. God deals with Israel as a nation. Gentiles is a people for his name. Not a nation for his name. Israel. And when Hitler and them persecuted the Jews and did the things that they'd done, under that, look, they, Stalin, Hitler, and all those dictators raised up, if we had the time which to rehearse it to some newcomers, but we went through it under that same age that there had been in Germany and, and all the other nations, 
Jews have scattered throughout all the land, but there has raised in the last 20 years a bitter persecution against the Jews. I've been out there at the old places where they burnt their bodies and cremated and used, a, used their ashes to fertilize the ground. Jewish children and women and everything, then they tried to deny it. Take them right out and show them where it was done. It's been a bitter persecution against Israel because it's been the time calling him now back to the atonement. He is still under the atonement of a natural lamb. The real lamb of God is the atonement, and he's rejected it, and the blood's been upon him ever since. Notice, making ready the people. How perfect then the seventh trumpet and the seventh seal is. Perfectly together, the persecution of the Jews. Note, in Revelations, the ninth chapter and the thirteenth verse, uh, notice real close, under the sixth trumpet, Revelations 9, 13, under the sixth trumpet, note there was 200,000 horsemen that had been bound in the river of Euphrates was turned loose under the sixth trumpet. Now there's not 200,000 horsemen in the world. But there was 200,000 horsemen. Notice, I want you to jot it down so you can read it. They wasn't natural horses. They breathed fire and they had breastplates of jasper and they had tails and the end of the tail looked like a serpent and a snake's head on the end of it stinging. See? It was spiritual horses, spiritual devils, chargers Amen. that have been bound in Euphrates all these years. Supernatural devils. What was it? The old Roman Empire being revived. Amen. The persecution of the Jews. They've been bound for nearly 2,000 years at the river Euphrates. Can't cross to the promise. A religious sect that was trying to get to the other side. Euphrates, you know, come to Eden. But they were bound there. 200,000 devils of persecution. And notice what happens during that sixth trumpet. They were turned loose on the Jews. The persecution of the Jews. Supernatural devils. Nearly 2,000 years then loosed by Stalin, Hitler, upon the Jews. You say, well, that isn't Roman. It's the same spirit. They've done the same things they did to the Christians in the old pagan Roman days. Now watch the natural Israel and the spiritual church now as we separate it here. Turn loose on the Jews. You remember on the sixth seal, however one of those martyrs are calling according to the word of God, receive robes. Amen. It's given to them by the grace because they're blinded that they can't see the gospel that this people might be called out of the Gentiles for the, the brown. They were given robes. The Bible says you heard that trumpet. Them Jews who absolutely is against Christ and everything. The reason they are is because the Bible said they're blinded. Amen. And they were blinded for your sake. Amen. And the just God knows that they would receive it. But they were made blind for your sake. The Bible said so. There's that Roman Empire bound there by what? The ecclesiastical powers. Which Rome, pagan Rome, become papal Rome. It was bound there in its traditions of Christian, what part of Christian and, and superstitions it had of Rome, putting together all these worship of women and all this other kind of stuff and Christmas days and holidays and holy days and things. It's been bound by that tradition that it cannot let loose because it's against Christian principles. Still the same ungodly pagan spirit. And that spirit caught into the nations of the world according to the prophecies of Ezekiel and the rest of them. And they were loosed upon the Jew who know nothing of the Spirit. There's your mysteries that's hidden in that seal there. Yeah. Notice that we went through it. And I'll show you this trumpet here, this last trumpet, what takes place. There they are. These trumpets are let loose on the Jews, don't you see? Not on the Gentiles, the Gentile, when them seals is open, is sealed away. Time is in. The church is called. You remember the vision the other day? Remember the, re the preview of it? How many remember Sunday before last? 
Uh, there it was exactly come by. We seen it exactly, seen that dirty, filthy thing come up, call the church. Vulgarity is to the extreme. And that little bride of every nation, each one of them dressed like their nation they come from, just perfectly walking before the Lord. You know, there'll be a time sometime when they'll say, well, I thought the church is to go before the persecution. I thought this is a rapture. It's already passed and you knew it not. That's what he said about John one time, you know. He said, how, uh, why say the prophets, that, uh, the scribes that Elias was first come, he said he's already come, and even the disciples didn't know it. Yeah, they'd right. done to him what they listed. The rapture will be the same way. In an hour, he promised to do that. He didn't promise to show Elias like that. But he promised to sh take the bride like that. In an hour that you think not, just a change in a moment of a twinkle of an eye, be caught away, then you're left. Then that's the time. Two thousand years, this spirit through the R Roman people, the Roman church, could not move. But that same spirit coming up first down there into Mussolini in Rome, the dictator. You know the five, seven things you showed me in 33 would come to pass? Five of them's already passed. Dr. Lay Bale's writing a book on it there now. See, five things perfectly and just two more things to happen. Said it happened just before the coming. Here we are right at the end now and look like that six things moving right up. See? Perfectly, exactly, even the wars and how they would happen exactly on the dot. Not one time did it miss. Listen, folks. We are taking inventory every hour. You don't know where we're standing. Real close. Now, now he loosed upon under that sixth seal these 200,000 spiritual demons started in Rome, Germany, Hitler. No children of the Bible where they received, never, they received power as kings but wasn't crowned. A dictator is not a crowned king. Just receive power as a king. Oh, the Spirit of God is moving through me now. You know, just saying something. I don't know how to say it or what to say, and maybe it better not. Notice, two hundred thousand demons turn loose upon those Jews when they burn them. They crucified them. They put bubbles in their veins. They killed them so they had no more gas to kill them with. And they shot them so they had no more bullets to shoot with. And they and they done everything they could do. And they cremated their bodies and everything and hung on fences, children and all. Innocent people because they were Jews. They were done that way. But God said he gave each one of them a robe. Undeserving as it was, but his grace to blind them so that we could see a seventh Seal hasn't opened yet, you know. That's his coming. So while they're still in there, but he shows us here in a preview of John. He's talking about one time walking on the sea. You know, he said, what about this man that leans on your bosom? He said, what is it to you if he stays till I come? See, he never stayed, but he took him up and showed him the things that happened until he come. Just showed him, reviewed the whole plan to John. Notice, we find now that that natural power under the natural to a natural nation, Israel, was loose there. And what did it? It went and made war and how it murdered and per persecuted. Now, in the ecclesiastical realm of it. I, oh, you're, I hope that God opens your eyes to this now. Because I realize this is not speaking to this church here. This tape goes worldwide. And I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but just to tell the truth. Now, the ecclesiastical realm has been opened from the natural realm revival of the old pagan Rome went forth on those Jews, which has always been their enemy. The lion with teeth and everything is stomped down and broke out. The people, Rome, always been God's enemy. And it was turned loose in the same spirit by the dictators of the world because the religious system was still holding. Now it's been loosed. What has it done in the cunningness? As he said, he come in like flatteries. And what has he done? He's bringing the Protestant ecumenical council of the world churches, the spirit of Antichrist upon both of them, bringing them to the slaughter just like they did the other. In the hour to call the bride. How? Loosed in the ecclesiastical church spirit. Loosed upon what? 
not upon the denominations, upon the bride. But here you get the bride will not go through that time. The Bible says not. The church will, but not the bride. Can't you see? Ministers, can't you see that, brethren? He said the church has to go through the persecution for the, for the uh, perfection of it. The blood of Jesus Christ perfects the bride. A man who chooses a wife don't put her through a lot of punishment. He's already found grace to, with her. She's found grace with him. He, he engages to her. And if there's anything he'll keep her from ever place to turn her hand. His grace is so great upon him. And so will it be upon the bride and so is it on the bride. We unworthy creatures deserving of hell. But his grace holds us to it. Look at how many lost and blind. How many, how many sinners was in the world the hour I got saved. God saved me for a purpose. And I'm determined by his will to do that purpose. I don't care what anything else goes. I want to do it. And in the hour when I see all the churches, they're great glamour, rich and have need of nothing, they say, and see the miserable, wretched, blind, and patting on the shoulders, want you to compromise with them. I was born for a purpose. That's to condemn that thing. And to call out. Yes, I do. Remember when Jesus came on the earth? There wasn't one hundredth of the people on the earth ever knowed he was here. He come to get that elected group. He said, no man can come to me except my father has drawn him. And all the Father hath past tense given me, they'll come. Amen. They'll know it. They'll hear it. Notice the loosing of this ecclesiastical spirit. Now, 20 years later, at that war, we see the loosing of the ecclesiastical spirit. What on earth? The seventh seal. The seventh trumpet to the Jew. Look at the moon darkening out. We're under. See it driving out? The Son of Man being drove from the church. What is it? Joining in with the ecclesiastical bunch, the, the ecumenical move, and with the World Council of Churches has drove every man. What does that thing stand for? Why, you have to surrender all your evangelical teachings and things. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? They can't. Jesus said they can't. And how can a church of Methodists and Baptists walk together? How can the church of Christ walk with the Presbyterians? How can the Catholic walk with a Protestant? Amen. How can Protestant walk with Protestant? But the bride can walk with the Word, which is Christ. It must be an agreement. Amen. Not the ecclesiastical system, but the Word. You have to agree with the Word to walk with the Word. Jesus said so. That makes it right. Notice. There she is. Now she's loose to call all these little loose sins. Oh, well, don't make any difference anyhow. That's what Satan said to Eve. Don't make any difference. It's all right. Surely God's a good God. He loves us all. He doesn't. Amen. You hear so much about being a good God. He is a good God. But being good, he has to be just. Amen. There is no goodness without justice. Amen. There is no justice without no law, without punishment, penalty. So we're in that hour that we're living. Notice quickly now. These supernatural demons... Then, under the, under the auspices of a united nation, united groups together, Eastern and Western, just like the right and left foot of the image that Daniel saw, how they wouldn't agree and mix with one another. And the word Eisenhower during that time, Eisenhower means iron. Khrushchev means clay. And he pulled off his shoe and beat it on the desk at the... When the League of Nations are the, at the U.N., Khrushchev did, dusting off it. Oh, man. The hour that we're living, the church in this condition. But thank God the little bride has made herself ready. Oh, it ain't long. Just hold on. I don't know how long. I don't know when. Nobody knows that. But we know it's close now. Watch the Ecclesiastes. Watch that natural, what it did to them Jews. That were the people that held to the laws of God. No matter how many churches raised up, what else? They was blinded to Christ and held to that law. God gave them robes, every one of them, because they went on in martyrs, see. They were, they were blinded for our sake. Here now the church that knows nothing but the Bible, regardless of ecclesiastical system, denomination, they know nothing about it. It's all foreign to them. They know him and him alone. 
people today are somewhat like Peter and them was up on the Mount Transfiguration. They got all enthused when they seen the supernatural did. And one said, we'll make one church of, of the prophets and one to Moses. And that's the way the people of Pentecostals did. They said, we'll make one assembly of God and one church of God and one oneness and one two-ness and so forth like that. But while he was just speaking, Jehovah cried out, this is my beloved son who is the word. Hear ye him. He is the word. The hour that we're living, the ecclesiasticals of spirits uniting together now and bring them all to this big one slaughter to blow out. It's already in writing here in this nation now. And these churches have to be closed. Unless you're with the organization, it's a union, it's a boycott. It's like the mark of the beast. And now you see what the beast is, don't you? It's a power. And a power, ecclesiastical power. Jesus said, be so close like the real thing and deceive the very elected if it was possible. But he promised to have something here for us in that day that we wouldn't be deceived. And that's the word in Christ to make it manifest to us. They're supernatural devils, unseen to the eye, but you can see what they're doing. Notice, while that group is riding, making themselves ready to stomp out, Everything that won't agree with them. There's another group being made ready after a while. Revelations 19. The next time the church is heard, she comes also, not upon exactly horses, but the Bible said he was on a white horse and the host of heaven was following him upon white horses. Is that right? Well, this group down here has got 2,000 bound at the river Euphrates and it's been bound for 2,000 years. Also, that... Church has bound the Holy Ghost for nearly 2,000 years under martyrdom back there. And under church ages, it's been bound, not at the river Euphrates, but at the door of creeds and dogmas that the Holy Spirit can't work in the church because of man-made systems. But she's going to be liberated. She's coming back. That's what the Bible says. And those two meet one another on the battlegrounds. Lucifer and Michael again, like in the beginning. They've been bound for 2,000 years almost. Almost 2,000 years. Not exactly 2,000. Because the Romans kept on going. Titus in 80, 96 and on down like that. Uh, kill the Jews, the Romans. Who was it killed the Jews? Who was Titus? The Roman general. The blood rolled out the gates down there up to the uh, uh, slaughter of women, children, and everything. Didn't Ezekiel 9 say to do that? Go through the midst of the city and set a mark upon the people who saw and cry. Uh, the Holy Spirit and the rest of them, the slaughtering man come forth that had been bound, hold them, hold them until they went forth and slaughtered everything that was in there. Little women, women, children, babies, and everything else, they were all slaughtered. Exactly. And here it is again, repeating itself. And here is that ecclesiastical system coming right back, smothering out, tramping out everything that's called God. Well, they got their systems and organizations and denominations, but that don't have nothing to do with the Bible. They'll tell you quick, they don't even believe in it. That's just say what the church says. It's what God says. That is the word. The bride is with the words. They're one. How can it be one? When that word that's wrote in there becomes in you and me and the word becomes one. Amen. That's exactly what he promised. Praise the Lord. Then it inter- God don't need an interpreter. They say, well, we interpret it like this. You've got no right to interpret nothing. God does his own interpretation. Amen. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Who interprets that? He said, a virgin shall conceive, and she did. They don't need any interpreter. It's already interpreted. God said, these things that happen in this day, and it is. They don't need no interpreter. It interprets itself. Oh, my. Revelations 9.1. Under the fifth trumpet, their king, notice, Revelations 9.1 now, the king of this great group of 200,000 horses, they had a king over them. And if we notice, it was a fallen star. Why art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Oh, how Dr. Smith got that so screwed up there, but it's all right. See. It wasn't for his hour, see. All right. Was the bottomless pit. Their king was the king of the bottomless pit. Revelation 17, 8. I wrote something down here. I'm just going to read it. You see here, Revelation 17, 8. I want to see what it says here because I don't know just how to hit this next 17, 8. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit 
and shall go into perdition. And they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose names are not written in the book of life of the life from the foundation of the world when they beheld the beast which was, which is not, and which yet is. See, was, one pope dies, another one ascends. Beast which was, which is not, which is, which is not, which is. Don't change its order. Pope, same time. Everything. Everything has to go in the same system. And it shall come or to the bottomless pits. And the Bible said here that the leader of these fellows was from the bottomless pits, and that was their king, and he sits with the triple crown. And joining the Protestants with him. Her Luther priest the other day said, a Lutheran preacher said, Well, if people ask me why I wear a, a collar, how can they tell me from the was you there? Yeah, wasn't that, wasn't that ridiculous? I, I almost felt like I vomited, walked off the platform. I said, for the, it shouldn't be any difference. If Luther, if Martin Luther here, that he'd turn over in his grave. Amen. Say, you hypocrites, you don't belong in my ranks. <laughs> but she wore scunt. There's no difference. There is a difference. Even difference in individual. God said, separate me and Paul and Barnabas. That's right. It'll work. Separate. God's a separator. <laughs> Not a mixture of separate people. The church wants a good mixture today. They can let them wear bathing suits and shorts and everything else and get out and carry on like that. But God said, separate. Amen. Separate yourself from the world. Amen. Revelations. We find out here that their king was from the bottomless pits and the same one that went into perdition. In and out, in and out, went out. Notice in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, how perfect is the... Uh, interpretation with the order with the word what we're trying to give now watch this note the order now we notice let's just turn and read that just for a moment and ecclesia and, and not ecclesiastes but um leviticus leviticus 23 now notice this year uh, leviticus the 23rd chapter now and we want not to miss this at all now so we can get it just exactly the way the Lord got it written here for us. I certainly can't find Leviticus and Exodus, can I? <laughs> All right, Leviticus now. And the Lord, 23rd, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, and a holy convulsion. See? Ye shall do the servile work therein, but ye shall not offer offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now watch. Now notice. And the Lord spake uh, Moses, saying, Also in the tenth day of the seventh month there shall be a day of an atonement. See? The atonement followed. The, watch now. The atonement followed the trumpet sound. See? How beautiful. See, the atonement day followed the trump. Now, now, the 50 days of the trumpets for us symbolized when the trumpets sounded at Pentecost, which was 50 days. Now, 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 after this, the Jews rejected that. Now, the trumpets is to call them back to that atonement. Amen. See, the atonement they rejected. And they rejected so our eyes could be open. Theirs was closed. And during this time, these seals opened up and the, the, the trumpets blowed. And now in the blowing of the trumpets just before the Messiah comes, because they've got to be in Palestine. And you remember, God had to harden Pharaoh's heart to run him out of Egypt. And he hardened stalling, muscling, and all that to get him back into the promised land where the 144,000 supposed to be. And now for the first time for thousands of years, 2,500 years, that Israel is a nation with its own flag, own army, own, and it considered in the in the U.N. First time it's been. The oldest flag that ever flew on earth at this time flies again. Amen. The five, the six-point star of David. He said he'd lift that ensign in the last days when she'd be coming back. We're at the end. There's just no doubt about it. We're here. Notice. Now, quickly. Revelation 9, under the seventh trumpet, their king is from the bottom of his pits. Now, Leviticus now. How perfect the interpretation is here with the word because, see, immediately following the Pentecostal Jubilee followed the Day of an Atonement, the order of the feast time. Between the Pentecostal feast to the 
atonement, the sound of the trumpets for the atonement was a Pentecostal feast, the long period of time. Look, there was a long period of time between the Pentecostal feast to the calling of the, uh, of the, trump, the sounding of the trumpets, the, the trumpets to be sound. A long period of time. Frankly, it was 50 days from the, from, the, from the feast of Pentecost to the feast of the uh, atonement. It was 50 days. Now, 50 days is exactly seven Sabbaths. And seven Sabbaths is the seven church years, church ages. Get it? See? See? Now the Jews has been blinded, waiting all this time while the Pentecostal first fruits has been poured out upon the church. And we've come down through the martyr ages and down through the reformer ages and now in the calling out age. Three sections, same spirit, like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, same one. See? But yeah. seven church ages being seven Sabbaths, exactly seven Sabbaths from the, from the Pentecostal Jubilee trumpet, uh, Pentecostal Jubilee feast, on to the waving of the sheep and then the Pentecostal Jubilee and then from the Jubilee to the atonement is seven Sabbaths, 50 days. And at the end of the 50 days is the, the atonement is made. You get it? Now, in the, this has been a type that the church, when he's revealed itself as Son of God, has been revealing to the church in the baptism of the Holy Ghost down through the ages and the, the Pentecostal age. They just keep getting more and more. Justification under Luther, sanctification under Wesley, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, here's the calling out time. At the sixth seal, when it, when it opened, the persecution struck the Jews in a literal standpoint, and here comes the persecution to the church in the ecclesiastical standpoint because the bride is already called. Amen. The Sabbaths are over. And ready for the Jews to be called where to? The Feast of Atonement. Oh, church, don't you see that? Called to the Feast of Atonement. What? To recognize the Atonement. Not no more chickens and geese and what they've been doing. The Lamb of God. Slain from the foundation of the world. Israel's going to know that. Notice here's a great thing. Look. Oh, my. The Holy Spirit has been bound by the denominations all these 2,000 years. We find out that it has. Now notice, the Sabbaths, seven Sabbaths, they couldn't get all the way out. The, the Bible said, there will be a day that will be neither night or day. And all Scripture, Jesus said, must be fulfilled. Is that right? Say amen. amen. The prophet said, there will be a day that can't be called day or night, but in the evening time it shall be like amen. What was it? The same sun that shines in the east is the same sun that shines in the west. Every time that sun comes up and goes across and sets, means your life. Little baby born, weak of a morning, about 8 o'clock it goes to school, 11.30 it's out of school, it's the heat of the day, then it begins to set to 50 years old, 60, 70, 80, 90, she sets over here and dies, only to come back the next day and say, there is a life, death, burial, resurrection. Amen. And notice, civilization has went with the sun. The oldest civilization we have is China. Anyone knows that? Where did the Holy Ghost fall? On the eastern country, on eastern people. And the gospel has traveled with the sun. It come from where? From over in the east into Germany, from Germany to England, across the channel three times. A Mediterranean into Germany, from, Germ uh, from the Mediterranean, from the east into Germany, through the Mediterranean, from Germany, across the English Channel, into England, from English Channel, across the Pacific, over into or the Atlantic, over into the United States. And now, she's at the West Coast. She's crossed the nation as she civilized and went across and went on civilization to travel. The Gospels travel with it. There are all the riffracks on the West Coast. Where everything you picked up like the tidal wave coming in. But the prophet said, the sun will not shine through this day. It'll be a day of gloom. They've had enough light like a real rainy day. They could join churches and believe the Lord and things like that. But he said, in the evening time, the clouds will move away. The denominations will fade in the same gospel, the same word made flesh. 
as he promised in Luke 17, 33. The same gospel with the same thing would take place in the evening time, just when the shadows of the grave were low. The same gospel, the same Christ that lived in flesh back counter at the beginning on the eastern people shall live again in the western people at the end time. It shall be light in the evening time. All scriptures is given by inspiration and cannot be broken. The big 50 days has passed over. The Pentecostal feast has passed over seven Sabbaths until the trumpets, a type of the seventh church age. Remember, remember, the se- under the sixth trumpet, the Jew, uh, are you listening? Under the sixth trumpet, the, the Pentecostals reject the Bible. The, the Luke, not only Pentecostals, all the rest. The church world rejects Christ and he's put on the outside. And in the same trumpet and the same seal, rather, when it was open, to show Jesus on the outside of the church trying to get back in, at the same time the trumpet sound for the Jews and the Jews recognize the atonement. Glory! Hallelujah! Oh my! The Holy Spirit's been bound by these denominational rivers for almost 2,000 years, but is to be loosed in the evening time by the evening time message. The Holy Spirit back in the church again. Christ Himself revealed in human flesh in the evening time. He said He promised it. There was three stages of it, as I said, the martyrs, age of the martyr for it, and then the stage of the reformers, and now the calling out time. When finished at latest in age, according to Revelation 10, the mystery of all the Bible would be known to the bride. Is that right? Revelation 10. Listen close now. <laughs> bride called out by the Word, Christ Himself calling out the bride, making plain Hebrews 13, 8, that He's the same yesterday and forever, does the same, is the same. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. See? Luke, 22, uh, Luke 17, 30, and also Malachi 4, Hebrews 4, all these scriptures is promised. This is to be between the sixth and the seventh seal and the sixth and the seventh trumpet. Pentecost feast finishes at the period of the seventh trumpet for the next is the coming of the uh, seventh uh, seal for the next is the mystery of the coming of Christ. And also the trumpet is sound for the Jews. Their sixth trumpet is sound and when it does it makes known to them the revealed Son of God, Amen. one half our spirits. Remember, all trumpets sound on this sixth seal. The sixth seal finishes a mystery under the sixth seal just before the seventh open. Notice, here's Leviticus 23 and 26. How in order is the Scripture after the long period of Pentecost, which Israel did reject back there, and he called the Gentile church out through this Pentecostal feast? How many understand what a Pentecostal feast is? It's the fruit of the first fruit of the harvest, the first fruit of the resurrection, the Pentecostal feast. Don't miss this, people. And you on tape, listen close. This has been the time of Pentecostal feast. The Jews have laid silent. They rejected it. Now they've got to be called back to the atonement. We know who the atonement was. They didn't. And the trumpet sound after the Pentecostal jubilee calls the Jews together. Can't you see how that trumpet of persecution under Hitler and him? Blasted and the Jews was forced to come together to fulfill the scriptures. Amen. Now you got it? All it's got to say, amen. amen. Good. All right. Notice here in Leviticus 26 now the order of the scriptures. After the long period of Pentecost, which ends in the calling out of the bride, the bride is called out by a servant, the rejected, next to be known to Israel, the feast of the atonement. Notice here is the same as in Leviticus the 16th chapter, now when he ordered the Feast of Pentecost, or the Feast of Atonement, but in this place, they are called, oh, how perfect. Get it, ministers? Don't miss it, ministers. In this Feast of Pentecost, which is represented in Leviticus 23, 26, or uh, 23 and 24, is a Feast of Mourning. Not a killing of a feast, the feast was killed. The atonement was killed, rather. The atonement was killed. Leviticus 16, it's exactly a parallel to it. Only in this place is called Israel to mourn for their sins. 
how perfect it is today. It's not the rekilling of which Moses symbolized with striking the rock the second time. It didn't work. Not a killing of a feast, but a mourning of rejecting the atonement. Oh my, this will be the trumpet the feast be rejected, then their Messiah made known. Notice, they'll know their Messiah when they see him. He's coming in power this time, the one they look for. He's coming in power for the Gentile bride. And the Jews are going to recognize him. And then the Bible says, we just got through preaching on it here about six months ago or more. The Bible says when they say, where did you get those wounds? How many remembers his message? Raise your hand. Sure, you. Where did you get those wounds? He said, in the house of my friends. Remember me preaching on the, the time when Jacob uh, sent the children of Israel down there to get the stuff and the food and stuff and how Joseph acted like he didn't know them and how all these things went on. Then he made himself known, you remember? And they were so scared they went to weeping. Same as Jacob's trouble. And here we find the Jews under persecution. They don't know where they stand now. But they're coming back. And when they do see the atonement appear, the Bible said when they said, they said they'd separate one home from another and weep for days like a, like a family that's lost their only son. Where did you get those wounds? He said, in the house of my friends. Remember, the bride's already in heaven. Joseph's wife was in the palace. Joseph dismissed everything from around him. And he made himself known to his brothers. You see? His wife and children and was in the palace. And he returns back to make himself known to the Jews. There's the atonement. There's the sound trumpet. That's what they say. Oh, what is it? There's the atonement. Where's that wounds come from? There it is. In the house of my friends. Remember what Joseph's brother said? Well, they said, now we'll be killed, sure enough. We did that. We did the evil like that. He said, no, God did this to save life. You remember the story in Genesis? Amen. So did he do it this way, save the life of the Gentile. Amen. Brian Amen. said, I got them in the house of my friend, but don't be angry. Say, don't be afraid of yourself. They said, oh, my, did we actually miss seeing it? Was that the atonement? And we've missed it. Oh, God. And they said, they just separate themselves and mourn for days. What is it? The atonement. Sadness. This... Time, the coming of the making known atonement is not the regular atonement being killed like in Leviticus 16, but Leviticus 23 is a mourning time of their sins. And their sins, what? They rejected it. Oh, don't you see where we're at? Don't you see why the trumpets means nothing to us? You all sounded under our sixth seal. Amen. You see now why the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me speak it? And the Heavenly Father knows that this Bible before me, that's the truth. Didn't know it till yesterday, the day before yesterday. In my room there where he revealed it, come to me and spoke to me. I come back, I said, wife, I got it now. He just met me in there and told me, here it is, honey. Hallelujah. You're there to see perfectly just in harmony. Oh, people without him, get in quick. It might be the last opportunity you ever be able to have. You don't know what time he might come. The Feast of the Trumpets. The Bible says they'd separate themselves one for another and pray and wait because like a person with their only child being lost. Look, I want to say one more thing closely now. Don't miss this. How striking from the seventh angel's messenger of the seventh seal message and Revelations 10 was the seventh seal to the seven trumpets between those two times. Oh, God, how can we say this to make the people see it? It's between that sixth trumpet and the sixth trumpet and the sixth trumpet and the sixth seal sounds at the same time. And between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, there is a prophet to appear before the Gentiles to call the people back to the original Pentecostal doctrine and the two witnesses of Revelation 11 appear to the Jews to send them to Jesus while the church has been taken up. Hallelujah. All of them prophets. Amen. The word of the Lord cannot be broken. It won't be a denomination. Do you see it? Read in your book here and see if that between the sixth and seventh trumpet isn't injected in there like the Jews being called out between the sixth and seventh plague. We come over to that 144,000. You remember that? Which was between that? Do you remember between the, the, the sixth, the fifth seal and the sixth seal, between the sixth seal and the seventh seal? There was a calling out of the 144,000. You remember that? Now, there's where these trumpets come in, right there, see? And persecution of horses loosed on there. Then between that, 
Then there was to be the seventh angel's message that had been preaching and condemning the Pentecostals. And Jesus said, be put out, wouldn't have no cooperation with nobody. Be put on the outside, rejected. The Bible said so. For it's Christ made manifest among us. Amen. Jesus among us all. Amen. Made manifest in the purity of his word, making it known. And that this is not just make up friends, this is thus saith the Lord. Amen. The scripture. At the same time, now as soon as this uh, church, the bride is drawn together, she's taken up in that mystery of the seventh seal. Or the seventh seal, the mystery going. And the Jews is called by the mystery of the seventh trumpet, which is two prophets, Elijah and Moses. And they come back, and there's where the Pentecostals is all mixed up. They're looking for something to happen. The church is done gone, and that's to the Jews. I, I feel in somebody's mind saying it couldn't be Moses. Yes, it is. I remember uh, he could tell me your thoughts. <laughs> I keep feeling that. Rhythm. All right. Let me straighten that out for you. It was Moses. Of course, here's your thought. You say that Moses, it couldn't be Moses because Moses died. You think it's Elijah. Uh, uh, it's Elijah true. When you think it's Enoch, you say Moses is already dead. But remember, he could come back to life again. He did. 800 years later, several hundred years later, he appeared on Mount Transfiguration. You say, if your man's done dead? Yes, sir. A Lazarus was dead, raised again, and then had to die again. Sure. And even the wicked will be raised up to life again, and then have to die. The second death. Is that right? So get that out of your mind. It is Moses. Watch your ministry. Just exactly what Moses and Elijah done. Close the heavens and spread. Fire upon, you know what the thing they done? Think of it. It's the end time, folks. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. The great day of the Lord is at hand. Amen. Gather yourselves together. Amen. Feast of the Messiah. They'll reject him and they'll find out that there is their Messiah. The Bible said them striking things like this would take place. And Revelation 11 call their Ministry will be the ministry of Moses and Elias calling to Israel out of the Jewish traditions just as the seventh angel's message called the bride out of the Pentecostal tradition. Remember, Moses and Elijah is to call Israel out of the old atonement of the lamb and sheep and blood and goats and sacrifice to the real living sacrifice, to the word. And the seventh angel's message on the same trumpet, same everything, exactly the same seal, is to what? Call the people, the bride, out of the Pentecostal and world tradition to the genuine atonement, the word Christ, impersonated in his word here, made flesh among us. Science has proved it by pictures. The church knows it the world around. We firmly know it. For he's never told us one thing, and thus saith the Lord, but what thing is true. Did he not say down there on the river as John the Baptist was sent? So will this Amen. I looked up and said, it's 12 o'clock. The midnight hour is here, friend. Upon us. See how perfect the scripture is? Hallelujah. Perfectly high. That, look, that's not going to be some organization go down there and call the Jews. It's going to be two men, Moses and Elijah, both of them prophets. I look to call the Gentiles, the bride out. He promised Malachi 4 to do the same thing. And the Bible says he'd be put out of the church in the seventh church age. He'd be put out of the church. He'd go completely black. And go, where does it black out? It goes into this ecclesiastical system, into this ecumenical council, world council of churches. She, he's put complete out his word. They can't agree with it. You know, they can't, they can't even agree in their own little local groups. How are they going to agree in that? So they take another mark of the beast, an uh, image unto the beast. Remember, the Bible said there was an image made unto the beast. And this United States has always been number 13. It started with 13 states, 13 colonies, 13 stars, 13 stripes. Number 13 and always a woman. She appears in the 13th chapter of Revelations. And first is a lamb, meekness. 
freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and so forth. And then he received power and spoke with all the power the dragon had before him. What is it? What was the dragon? Rome. See, it a mark, an image of the beast raised up against the real church of God under them denominations will plague this thing. But to when he start to do it, the lamb shall take his bride. He'll be ever at his side. All the host of heaven will assemble be. For it will be a glorious sight. All the saints and spotless white. And with Jesus they shall feast eternally. Amen. Amen. Come and dine. The master call it come and dine. Amen. What a day we're living in. Now, run, people, run for your lives. Notice how I'm closing. The ministry, like the seventh angel, the two witnesses, they know that a seventh trumpet just before, the sixth trumpet just before the seventh trumpet. Fight. And I remember, and I told you, I'd bring back this great trumpet. He said, what would you do here in Isaiah? He said, at the great trumpet would sound the great trumpet. Not trumpets now, feast of trumpets. It's two of them, Moses and Elias, to call the trumpet. But under the great trumpet, the coming of the Lord to announce Joseph returning, see, that all nations would assemble at Jerusalem. Amen. You find that? In the book of Isaiah, I just give it to you a while ago. Uh, one of those chapters we read, that's in Isaiah 18, 1 and 3. And then Isaiah 27, 12, and 13 is where he sounds that trumpet and all of the nations will recognize Israel in her homeland. God with her. Then the bride will come to be with the bridegroom and the bridegroom with the bride. And then the great millennium after the whole world is destroyed by atomic power and there will be a new heavens and new earth. Amen. She'll live forever. Look, right under, now notice, the ministry of Moses and Elijah will. Now everybody get it? Let me say it again. The ministry of Moses and Elijah between the sixth and seventh trumpet will be two prophets that will... They, Israel always believed their prophets. Now, why did the Holy Spirit say to me when I started up there to show them that He was the Son of God? I said, not yet. You remember that about five years ago, Omar way to India? I said, don't do it. I said, they said, if this be the Messiah, let us see Him do the sign of the prophet. We be the prophets. Brother Louis Petrus and them sent me those Bibles when they give a million of them out to them Jews coming from Iran and they were coming back. Similar and cells going to become a nation. I thought, this is my time. And I was already in Cairo, Egypt. He said, don't do it now. The hour's not yet. Then I returned home. <laughs> oh, my. Moses and Elijah's got to call. The Pentecostal Jubilee's still going or had up to this time. See? Now the Feast of Trumpets has to be known. And this one over here of Malachi 4 is not connected with that one over there. Not at all. Not at all. Notice. Watch here. The ministry will be Moses and Elijah changing and calling Israel from the Jewish traditions. Listen. From the Jewish traditions that they've been mixed up in, being prophets, they'll believe him, calling them to the feast of the atonement. Christ. Let them recognize Christ. They'll say he's coming. He'll be here. The Jews will be gathered and things like that. And then when he comes, say, here I am. Where'd you get them scars? House of my friends. Now the same as those two prophets did. Remember the Gentile bride is to have a prophet called Elias, Elijah. That's to call them out of their traditions. The bride just the same as these prophets called Jews out of Judaism to Christ the atonement. And the Gentiles already knows the atonement. But it's to call the bride back to the original atonement where these 50 Sabbaths, the, all these uh, seven Sabbaths that uh, they have got away from. Call them back to the end time. The seven, listen, the seven church messenger, the seven trumpet messenger is all prophets. Now that's right. Injected is the 144,000 calling the seals which was to the Gentiles. It had to be the Gentiles to open up the Gentiles to see the Gentile church. That's all we know. That's all we listen to. What's already passed. We look for Jesus. He said, now, wait a minute, Brother Bram. I believe they're going to do this. The last sign that Abraham, and we are the royal seed of Abraham, the bride, the last sign that Abraham ever seen before the promised, sign, uh, promised son come was what? God! In the form of a human being that could discern the thoughts of the people. One man, not a dozen. One man. No matter how many impersonations they had, one. And he discerned the thoughts that's in there. What? And the next thing happened! 
Abraham and Sarah turned back to a young man and woman. Hallelujah. We know that. Now, I know that kind of chokes you a little bit now. Hallelujah. But remember, just so that you'll be sure to know now. You don't read the Bible like this. You read between the lines and see, make the picture come. Watch. Sarah was an old woman, the Bible said. She, they, her womb was dead. Is that right? Abraham's life was dead in him. His seed. Is that right? Now, remember, Abraham's seed was dead. Forty years later, he had seven sons by another woman. What did he do? He changed their body. Watch, he took a 300-mile journey down to Gerea. Quite a long journey for an old man. Said, and Sarah even thought they couldn't have family relations. She said, me, 20 years or more, maybe before they had family relations, said, me, an old one, and my Lord also have pleasure again like young people. He said, it ain't too hard for God. Notice. What happened? Immediately she turned back to a lovely young woman, showing in that portraying what he's going to do to the royal seed of Abraham to receive the son that's been promised. She turned back to him. Look, they went out into a career, and what happened? Amalek, the king, fell in love with her, said she's fair and beautiful, and was going to marry her. Is that right? Amen. Old grandma and all them other pretty girls down there. Granny. She's beautiful. She's fair to look up on. See? God changed her body. And turn them back. It's a mystery. That's to be revealed now in this day. By the Son of Man. Hallelujah. See? Hallelujah. The evening message. See? Turn back. And as the last sign they seen was what? That discernment before the change of the body comes. And before we can ever receive the Son, what happened? The trumpet of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first a new body. And we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in a twinkle of an eye. Hallelujah! And you'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. The secret has been made known. The seals are open. The trumpet sounded for the Israel. The two prophets is ready to appear. What is it? The church must get off the scene right now so they can appear. He can't deal with two at the same time. He never did. Hmm? Oh, brother. Watch. Exactly. To call all, call them out of the denominations and traditions. Now we see the church of Pentecost age is finished. The bride must step out of the way to go up now. So the two servants, the two servants of God in Revelations, the two prophets can appear upon the scene to sound the seventh trumpet to them. Make known to them the Christ. The seventh angel messenger say, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Not behold my method is my Baptist, my Pentecostal, but the word... The Son of God, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. For no other foundations is there. And see, how long have we got? The Jews are in their homeland. The bride's called. Scripturally, everything just exactly what he promised. We're ready. The hour is here. Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. The signs that the Bible foretold. The Gentile days numbered with horrors and cumbered. Return, O disperse to your own. The day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear. Be filled with God's Spirit. Have your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up. Your redemption is near. False prophets are lying. God's truth they're denying. That Jesus the Christ is our God. That's right. But we'll walk where the apostles have trod. For the day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear. Be filled with the Spirit. Your lamps trimmed and clear. Don't take a chance. Look up. Your redemption is near. The prophet said, It shall be light in the evening time. It shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find in the waterway is the light today buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sins. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. The evening lights have come. It is a fact that God and Christ are one. We're here! We're at the end. That's not just some silly thing of a man. That's thus saith the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Merciful God, Jehovah the Almighty that thundered on Mount Sinai, and the people screamed, let Moses speak, and not God, lest we die. 
He said, Great Jehovah, I'll raise him up a prophet. I'll not speak to him no more like this. But you promised what you'd do. And you did it. You raised us up, the Lord Jesus. He is the Word. You said he was. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We see the things that he prophesied to us here through his prophet, John, on the Isle of Patmos. We see it fulfilled to the letter. We see the Holy Ghost made manifest among us here on earth. We see the denominations put him out of the church. The Word. they got nothing against the people. It's that Word that they hate. It's against their tradition. Just as when you were here on earth, you was the Word, and you were against their traditions, and they threw you out of the churches everywhere. And now, Lord, there's no cooperation nowhere. Try and even get into South Africa. Well, I know these souls are yet waiting. Every place, and look like they won't receive me, Lord. Not because of me, Lord, it's because of this message. But you said it would be this way, and you made it known to us so we wouldn't be discouraged. We know the hour we're living. God, these people sat here this morning in this hot baking room here. They've listened close. They see now, I'm sure, if they don't, reveal it to them, Lord, why? That you wouldn't permit me to take those trumpets. I see it. It has nothing to do with us. Right that sixth trumpet, it all happened. And we've done seeing the sixth seal open. And we've seen a vision here two weeks ago of the preview of the bride and the church. As I told it, you're just as you showed me, Lord. I told it. Here we are. It may be later than we think. Oh, Father, if there's a person here this morning that it's just taken some superstition, some uh, theological uh, influence or some theologian's word which is contrary to the word of God, and they don't know the real Christ, the real Holy Spirit. It isn't revealed to them the Word yet, how the Word is to be in this day. They only see a tradition. They're living in a, a light that's blinding. Like the greatest robbery that was ever done in the world was in England. It was done by a false light. And the greatest robbery your church has ever had has been when they've taken a denominational light and refused the genuine light of the Bible, the Christ. Oh, God, be merciful. Save the lost, Lord. Please, I ask just a little while longer, Jesus. We got loved ones. Just a little while longer. Soon that great rock will be hewed out of the mountain. Grant, Lord, if any here this morning without you, may they come just now sweetly and receive you. While we have our heads bowed, if you'd raise your hand, say, Remember me, Brother Brown. We have no the altars and things are filled up. God bless you. Just say, Remember me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just literally hundreds of hands. Father God, there's a little shadow somewhere. Take it away, Lord. They sit here in this room. Don't. Satan might have blinded their eyes in times past, but I pray that you'll wink at that as you did to us in many days ago. But now that you call us all to sight, the Bible said they were blind. They didn't know it said, I counsel thee to buy me I salve. God, use the salve this morning upon their eyes, that they might see, yet it be humble and a bunch of humble people and humble, uneducated and so forth, but yet that's the way it was at the beginning. Grant it, Lord, if they'll receive it just now, I give them to thee in the name of thy son, Jesus. You said, he that heareth my word. I'm sure, Lord, the best of my knowledge, they've heard it, and believeth on him that sent me. Not make believe, but really believe. Believe what the Word has said. Has everlasting life and shall not come to the judgment, but pass from death to life. John 5, 24. Grant, Lord, that they'll be yours from this hour on. If there's a wonder in their mind, take it away. If there's a sick person in our midst, let the great Holy Spirit, Lord, which I know there is, revealing the thoughts standing here on the platform, they know all about it. I pray that you heal them, Lord. Settle all the questions. The pool will be open to those who've never been immersed in the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. taking the name of the bridegroom. They got a denomination, ecclesiastical. No one was ever baptized in that titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or sprinkled in these traditional things that belongs to churches of this age, Antichrist movement, the image of the beast. Nobody was ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost till the Catholic Church. All the Bible and all the history afterwards says they were baptized in the name of Jesus. 
Paul said in Galatians 8, 1, if even an angel from heaven comes and preaches another gospel, let him be cursed. And you commanded those people who had been baptized under John, the same one who baptized Jesus, to come and be rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ in Acts 19. And said, don't even let an angel tell you anything else. There will come a messenger in the last day. It will guide the people back to the first fruit, back to the original faith. Grant it, Lord, that great messenger among us now, the great Christ, the Holy Spirit made vivid, made understanding, opening up the Word and revealing it to us. May He guide them back to the original Pentecostal faith. Like Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent, every one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sin. And it was forever that way to every person until the Roman church at Nicaea. God be merciful now. The pool be ready. The hearts open. Come in, Lord Jesus. We're in the last hours. If there is possibility, Lord, of them coming in at this hour, which I hope and trust that there is, and we who are in, Lord, may we take inventory now that we have seen and heard the voice of God speaking through His Word, and we know what hour we're living. Grant it, Father. We commit them to Thee in the name of Thy Son. Now with our heads bowed, Softly and